Could one major decision be holding back billions, if not trillions, from pouring into Bitcoin? If so, what is it? And what should we be mindful of as investors in the crypto space? Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore what Bitcoin ETFs or exchange traded funds are, which ones currently exist, and the one that could radically ignite mass adoption if approved. This video is sponsored by FTX, one of the largest US regulated crypto exchanges in the market. More on them in a bit. Beware of scammers impersonating myself and others in the space that message you claiming they can generate profits for you and ask you to send them money or crypto. Do not ever send anyone money or crypto that guarantees profit and do not ever send money or crypto to anyone that claims they can help you recover lost or stolen crypto. When you invest in crypto, you should only be sending it from the exchange to your cold storage hardware wallet to hold long term. So stay vigilant during these crazy times, crypto fam. Awesome. Let's learn about the Bitcoin ETF that could be a major game changer for crypto. What is an ETF? ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And that's just a fancy term for a financial product investors can add to their overall portfolio. While a traditional stock represents a share of one specific company like Apple versus Google versus Amazon, with an ETF, imagine a fund that includes stocks from all three of those companies. And to keep it short and simple, we named the fund AGA or AGA because it's a mix of Apple, Google, and Amazon. Then we want to allow other investors like you and I to own shares of this fund. So we decide to list it on an exchange like Fidelity or E-Trade, where people can buy, sell, and trade AGA shares which gives investors exposure to all three companies without them having to buy stocks from each company separately. Basically, they can invest in the ETF shares the same exact way they would invest in a regular stock on an exchange. Nice, so now this fund is on an exchange with its shares that can be traded. Reorganizing those keywords is where we get the term exchange traded fund. Pretty simple, right? So within any investment fund, you can have different types of assets, like a mix of stocks, commodities, real estate, and more recently, over the past few years, even Bitcoin, kind of. Why kind of? Well, there are other types of ETF products that allow investors to pretty much legally gamble on what they think the future unknown prices of assets will be with ETF futures, as well as legally bet that the price of an asset will be lower in the future with inverse or short ETFs. And interestingly enough, the only types of Bitcoin ETFs that have been approved by the SEC in the United States so far are futures and inverse ETFs. Let's break down the differences between the two and then explore the implications of the approval of the third type of Bitcoin ETF that could cause a ton of money to pour into the space. What is a Bitcoin futures ETF? Futures in the realm of ETFs refer to futures contracts which is simply an agreement where a buyer and a seller agree to exchange a specific amount of an asset on a specific day for a specific price. So a Bitcoin futures ETF is a fund that holds contracts that are linked to the price of Bitcoin. They do not actually hold any Bitcoin. Why is it so? Well, at the time of this video, ETFs are not allowed to hold actual Bitcoin. The first Bitcoin ETF that was approved for trading in the US was a Bitcoin futures ETF created by ProShares, called the Bitcoin Strategy Fund ETF in October of 2021. So basically using a Bitcoin futures ETF, we can buy, sell, and trade contracts that dictate which specific day, at what specific price, a specific amount of Bitcoin will be bought or sold. What this does is give big institutional investors that are otherwise still not completely in the clear to invest in Bitcoin, the ability to get price exposure of Bitcoin through futures contracts. Which is funny when you think about it, because they aren't allowed to invest directly in Bitcoin, but with the Bitcoin futures ETFs, they're allowed to gamble by placing a bet on the future unknown price of Bitcoin. Lame, but still a step in the right direction, you know, in that it's progress. And just this past week, another type of Bitcoin ETF was approved, a Bitcoin short ETF, which happened to be with the same company as the first approved Bitcoin futures ETF, ProShares. What is a short Bitcoin ETF? A short ETF, also more commonly known in the finance realm as an inverse ETF, is a fund designed to profit from a decrease in the value of an asset. Investors use this type of ETF to hedge their overall portfolios. Investing in an inverse ETF is similar to just outright taking a short position on the future price of an asset. However, it doesn't require the investor to hold a margin account, 
which is required when trading and shorting positions. So the Bitcoin short ETF is a way for people to potentially make money when or if the price of Bitcoin declines, which can be used also to hedge their overall investment portfolios. Sweet. So there we have it. Futures and short Bitcoin ETFs. Now the Bitcoin ETF we've all been waiting for that will be huge for Bitcoin and crypto overall is known as the spot ETF. Before exploring why, a quick bit on the video sponsor FTX. FTX is one of the largest US regulated exchanges in the world that allows its millions of users to buy, sell, trade, and track cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and pretty soon, traditional stocks. FTX's fees are up to 85% lower than other top competitors, and there are no fixed minimum fees on transactions, no ACH fees, and no gas fees on their NFT marketplace, which features the most popular Ethereum and Solana NFT collections. Setting up a DCA or dollar cost averaging strategy is extremely simple, which historically delivers the best results during bear markets. With FTX, this literally takes 20 seconds. You open the app, enter your pin code, tap buy, select the crypto, enter an amount, tap one time to select the frequency between daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, tap review, make sure everything looks good, and slide right to submit the order. And if you're interested in learning how we can supercharge our DCA strategy, I have a video guide, which you can check out by clicking on the link above, about using strategically placed limit orders on FTX's Pro Mobile app, all from the convenience of our cell phone. So if you'd like to check out FTX, please be sure to scroll down to the description area below to access the correct and official site, as well as redeem any nice sign-up bonuses available as a reward. Amazing. Now for the spot ETF. What is a spot Bitcoin ETF? The word spot or spot price means the current market price. So a spot Bitcoin ETF is a fund that allows investors to buy and sell Bitcoin at the price it is at that moment in time. And the fund actually buys, sells and holds Bitcoin, which would allow investors to hold Bitcoin without having to manage it with their own wallet. The ETF would be a custodian for the investor's Bitcoin. So as we discussed in our definition of ETFs, shares of the fund are tradable on traditional stock exchanges. Why is this a big deal? Well, there are a ton of people, mostly older people, with a ton of money held in their legacy finance retirement accounts on Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and similar. And a spot Bitcoin ETF would be a regulated, stable way for all these people to gain price exposure to Bitcoin in their investment portfolios. This would open up the floodgates to a ton of money that's been on the sidelines waiting for a more regulatory clarity. Because the SEC granting approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF would be enough clarity to allow any person, institution, retirement account provider, etc. to pretty much invest in Bitcoin on the stock market. Right now, you'd have to open up an account with a dedicated crypto IRA provider like iTrust Capital, which you can check out by clicking on the link below, or opening up accounts with crypto exchanges like FTX which a lot of older people with retirement accounts simply aren't interested in messing with, which is likely for the best right now because I don't recommend keeping a lot of money, especially retirement money, on crypto exchanges. So in addition to opening up all these accounts and having some of their retirement separate from what they've been used to for decades with Fidelity and similar, they would have to take the time to figure out how to set up their own crypto wallets, which could just put them off of crypto entirely as the process can be complicated. A spot Bitcoin ETF is designed to allow more people to invest in Bitcoin without the hassle of actually buying it. And it would eliminate the need for additional security procedures because the fund would custody the Bitcoin. So as you can see, traditional investors are very familiar and comfortable with ETFs. And one that would make investing in Bitcoin as simple and straightforward as any other stock or ETF, it allows money to flow into the space without people having to take time to learn about blockchain, wallets, mining, keys, and everything else. Cool. So why has the SEC approved legalized gambling of the future price of Bitcoin, as well as betting via shorts that the price will decline, but still hasn't approved the simple, straightforward spot price investment vehicle for Bitcoin? Well, it's seeming more and more like there is a not so hidden agenda against Bitcoin. Either the SEC is waiting for its traditional banking buddies to get ready to compete in the spot Bitcoin ETF space before granting approval, or recently, we've gotten insight on a more likely scenario. Last month, the US Securities and Exchange Commission gave the green light to fund firm Tucrium to issue a Bitcoin futures exchange traded product. Sal Gaberti, CEO of Tucrium, pointed out a footnote in the regulator's approval letter to CNBC's ETF Edge. In reference to the potential for fraud and manipulation, it reads, if however, an exchange proposing to list and trade a spot Bitcoin product identifies, 
the regulated market with which it has a comprehensive surveillance sharing agreement, the exchange could overcome the commission's concern. Gilberti explains, they've clearly spelled out that if the crypto exchanges institute those comprehensive surveillance agreements with the ETF listing exchanges, they will get a crypto spot ETF. But therein lies the fundamental problem. Gilberti concludes, I don't think it's going to happen because I don't see why those big crypto exchanges would want to centralize when the whole industry is made up around a decentralized concept. Crypto firm Grayscale, one of the biggest proponents of a spot Bitcoin ETF and creator of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, recently threatened to sue the SEC over the issue. But Gilberti was not convinced of the effectiveness of such attack, arguing it would take years. The SEC is not going to succumb to that kind of pressure. Unless you get a change in leadership who have a sea change in how they are looking at things, they want to see crypto coins completely surveilled. I don't see how they're going to back down from that when they're all about investor protection. Yeah, so the SEC is holding the spot Bitcoin ETF hostage. For how long? Will someone capitulate? If so, when and who? Well, we've got at least one ally in the SEC, Commissioner Hester Pierce, made these remarks at a conference. And just for reference, ETP stands for Exchange Traded Products, which include ETFs. It is time for the Commission to stop denying categorically spot crypto exchange traded products. The Commission's resistance to a spot Bitcoin ETP is becoming almost legendary. When is the Commission going to approve a Bitcoin exchange traded product? Is one of the most frequent questions I get. For the last four years, my answer has been approximately the same. I have no idea, tinged with a note of disbelief. The reasons for this resistance to a spot product are difficult to understand apart from a recognition that the commission has determined to subject anything related to Bitcoin and presumably other digital assets to a more exacting standard than it applies to other products. Spot ETPs have launched in other countries without incident and with great investor interest. In Canada, for example, the first spot Bitcoin ETP reached 1 billion Canadian dollars in assets under management a month after launch in 2020. Spot crypto ETPs are also popular in Europe, where there are more than 70 crypto ETPs with an estimated total of $7 billion in assets. ETPs in these other jurisdictions have functioned, even in volatile markets. Yeah, so either Pierce and Gensler are playing a coordinated good cop, bad cop game, or Gensler is a nefarious character with an agenda. My random wild guess is we won't see much crypto regulation until after the midterm elections as politicians are too busy distracting us and dividing us, all while trying to manipulate or buy their seat in Congress. At the end of the day, the longer they wait to regulate, the more growth, development, and adoption is occurring in the space. And it also gives us extra time to build our income streams, knowledge, and portfolios before that huge wave of money comes crashing in once a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved. So we should consider the delay a blessing in disguise during this bear market. And also, just imagine if this thing was approved after the bear cycle during a turn to a bull market. Would be epic, for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification to stay up to date on all of the latest videos. So, what do you think about ETFs? Do you think the approval of futures and shorts, but not a spot for Bitcoin, was by design? What do you think will happen if or when we get a Bitcoin spot ETF? Let me know in the comments below. Be safe out there.